So today we are going to focus on reproduction in sponges. And in the one of the videos that we watched in class, you guys got to see kind of a preview of that, but we're going to talk about the two basic strategies that sponges use in order to um, make sure that they are able to live for a very long time and to pass on their genes and all that good stuff. So sponges produce both sexually and asexually. So we know what sexual reproduction is. Sexual reproduction is just when there is a male and a female cell that fuse together to create a completely new organism. So the male cell would be the sperm and the female sperm would, or the, the female cell would be the egg, right? Sexual reproduction is what we are probably more familiar with. Asexual reproduction is a method of cloning and um, it means that there's no fusion of the male and female sex cells and this, in sponges, these guys are able to do this through something called budding or asexual budding. So take a look at this diagram right here. We've got a very generic sponge here. Take a look at this tiny little growth here. This is called a bud. This bud is naturally weak at this point here where it connects to the main part of the body. So at some point, the bud grows and that weak part ends up breaking off. The smaller piece ends up floating until it finds a decent uh, substrate or a decent place to attach that is away from the parent organism, and it will start to grow, and it will end up growing into a, a large adult sponge over a period of time. So this is asexual reproduction. Fun fact, sponges are actually highly regenerative. So you could take a sponge, and we will try to do that this at some point when I get back, um, you can take a sponge and put it in a blender and then take those cells and put them in a new petri dish and you can actually see um, new sponge cell or new sponges being created just from those tiny little aggregations of cells. So they're really, really sturdy organisms when it comes to sexual re or asexual reproduction. What's important to know is that this tiny sponge that starts off is a genetic clone to the parent sponge. So there is no genetic diversity between those two sponges. Sexual reproduction is what we are most familiar with. So the male sponges release sperm, which is uh, pushed out of the osculum by the collar cells. The currents are what the sponges rely on to take that sperm away into hopefully a female sponge. Female sponges have eggs that are held in the sidewall of the um, sponge, so the eggs are in this area right here. The sperm cells make their way into the sponge through the ostia and um, find their way to an egg somewhere in here. So the egg and the sperm, the sperm fertilizes the egg and it begins to develop and turns into a larvae and then is pushed back out of the sponge, again through the osculum, and we get free swimming larva here. It's free swimming because these little tiny projections are called cilia, and they allow the sponge, the larval sponge, or the baby sponge, for lack of a better term, to swim and find a place to attach. Once it finds a place to attach, it will grow into something that looks more like the adult sponge it came from and eventually it will grow until it is an adult sponge and can repeat the process. Sponges do sexual reproduction or asexual reproduction um, pretty much just as needed. Um, they do it in order to increase their population. And um, at this point, you guys are going to stop the lecture series and we're gonna go ahead and pause and take a quick quiz before we move on to the next topic. This quiz will be on Microsoft Teams. You should be able to find it under there, under the assignments. It will be called uh, Periphera Reproduction Quiz.